Welcome to another spectacular episode of the Back of Now podcast. I'm your host, Akil, with Casey from Toronto. That's right. And we're joined with special guest Alonzo. What's going on, fellas? Alonzo, what's cracking? The three Pete right here. Yeah, three man. Pete, man. We we going in with y'all building a dynasty, man. I'm just I'm just the Rodman. Y'all the Jordan <laughs> Pippen. You the Rodman in this thing? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just the wild dude that pops up with this game. Time. Hey, you pop up and perform. That's what's important. <laughs> okay, I don't give a damn what you do with your off time. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm just the Rodman. Wakes up nocturnal hours and like, oh, it's time for a game. All right, let's go get, <laughs> let's go get this dub. Go do I some the and show back up. <laughs> all right, so let's jump into this. So, um, we all know about the uh, the death of uh, George Floyd, who yes, died yes. by a uh, police brutality that was captured yeah. on film. Yeah. The world is reacting. Uh, currently, the cop, the officer that, that committed that crime, they're looking to give him third degree murder, which I feel is trash. He should have got first degree, and um. Currently, the world's reacting. We have protests in Washington. We have protests in uh, Georgia. We have protests in Minnesota. We got protests in New York City. Casey, we got protests in uh, Toronto. So That's right. I just wanted everybody's Houston. perspective on this and yeah. see how, how you guys are feeling, what are you noticing. I've been seeing a lot of people in positions like teachers, and I just feel like that racism to them, it just it feels so good that despite their job and their career, they got to go on Facebook and let you know how they feel. I've been seeing a lot of that. I've been seeing teachers writing stuff and then losing their jobs. We had the wheelchair, Karen, who was blocking Target with the <laughs> knife in her hand. <laughs> oh, Lord, Karen, man. Karen in the wheelchair, man. That was that was something else. See, and, and then we saw all angles of her getting off the wheelchair. <laughs> Started trying to stab up people. She had a whole day, man. I was like, who is this and why is she doing this? The Cassidy, bro. The Cassidy of it all. <laughs> I ain't feeling the the rioting and the the people that are aggravating it. I I think uh, we got to stay focused on what this is for. And but man, we this it's about time. Honestly, it's about goddamn time that this is happening because we're too nice, man. We're on, we're honestly too nice. <laughs> you yeah. think this shit would be happening in if this was happening to white people in Boston every day if someone was getting killed once every week? Well, remember this the Bobby Tea happen. Party in American history? That's what I'm getting to, it's man. Like, yeah, yeah that's what, this is us for our tea. This is this is what our, our unfortunately like America is holding the flag for the freedom of man and making your dreams come true. And the rest of the world has followed that suit. So this is what we've been taught. It's like when this is when you get hit, this is how you react. And it's about, in my opinion, it's about time that we're all reacting this way because the rioting is messed up. The aggravators, we got to get them out of there. But the protesting is necessary to get. Because you got some opportunists. I saw a white lady run into Target, grab a TV, and walk it. I was like, you know damn well that I'm you so ain't there glad. for no protest. You were just trying to get a damn TV. I'm so glad people got their cell phones out and they're taping that stuff to be shown because CNN, they're doing a great job of showing what's happening to a certain degree, but they're not showing the looting and all that stuff to the capacity of what people are showing online to where it's actually aggravators going in and just trying to teeth out things or police that are covering up their face and going breaking mirrors breaking glass and getting people and influencing people to want to go in and riot inciting so violence that's that's part of the reason while i was watching what was happening in atlanta i was like why are they busting in in uh cnn cnn's doing a job of showing us what's happening it's not accurate accurate but my under my assumption is like yo people are getting vexed at people that are giving this message that's not factual so they're going and attacking that building where cold, cold, like the cops went into that building also. So they went to where the police were and it happened to be CNN and it was like, yo, they're sending a fake message anyway. So that just made them go even more ballistic with the Casey, did you see the CNN um, reporter who got arrested? While I saw that live. live. I live, saw it live. Man. Yeah, I woke up. I woke up early that morning. I didn't really sleep too good that night. I woke up 4.35 in the morning and I saw that shit happening live. I was like, yo, what the... What the ass is this? That's what I was saying when he, when he was getting arrested. And the other three people that were with him, the cameraman, the security, and the producer who was with him, they they weren't getting touched. There was a whole nope. lineup of, nope. of, of people, police or whatever you want to call them, right there. They didn't touch them, but they only went after him. I noticed mm -hmm. a lot of people that were being busted and showing on, the, on CNN and on TV were black people being arrested. So it, it's a crazy thing that's happening right now. And it's unfortunately necessary. Lonzo, jump in. 
both of you brought up a big point in terms of perception and how there can be misinformation and even like disinformation that's yeah. being spread, mm -hmm. especially in the world of, you know, the internet, people get on Al Gore's media and or internet and like through social media platforms, you'll see a lot of people that are clicking share before vetting different stories, different sources, because people want to get the information out before getting the story right. And they're not balancing that information. And so it's like, uh, like Casey was talking about, even when we talk about what it means for people to protest, um, how CNN will say, well, yeah, they're rioting. And I'm like, it's, it's a revolt. Cause like a, 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 it's an insurrection or an uprising, right? Exactly. And that insurrection or uprising is in response to authority. It's in response to corrupt government. And so, yeah. cause, cause a riot is just like, the disturbance of a peace. Well, the peace was disturbed the moment you deemed a black life expendable and you know, killed somebody in the streets. Like that disturbed the peace. So now you have an insurrection as a result of that. And it's like both of you are saying, when you have the caucasity mm. to, in, to infiltrate, cause that's all I, like, that's what I like to call it. It's the yeah, Caucasian yeah. audacity. Like you have the caucasity to infiltrate, co-op, influence, and misinform the, the protests, and in, you're looting in the name of social justice, you are literally capitalizing off of Black suffering, per usual. So, like, you're, you're going into Target in Minneapolis, which is 20% Black. So even those establishments that are being damaged in Minneapolis, and I've, I've been there, um in the in the summer before before for a wedding but like you're going into the establishment it's not because you're actually um uh, expressing any type of allyship or being an accomplice who seeks to dismantle these systems mm -hmm. no you're actually going in there playing swiper from door to explorer and seeing how you can capitalize off yeah. of the contributions of black people who literally can be killed while you're just in there getting the tv or you while get you're killed uh, live on TV. Yeah, right. Like while you're or they're gonna be maced or arrested. And you're not gonna be arrested um while you're getting your TV from Target or while you're on Planet Fitness riding a bike. While yes, I saw that. Look, there was a guy that broke into Planet Fitness to work out. Oh, right. was a white yeah. guy. <laughs> in the purple, yeah. yeah. He's I'm like, like, he's like, fuck, I'm going to get my cardio. I saw that and I'm like, yo, this is a serious thing that we're doing right here and, and people are doing. And you guys are trying to just get Instagram famous or something? Like, yo, get out of here with that Opportunist, shit. Opportunist, man. when I saw that. Exactly. From, from the American perspective, Alonso, <laughs> let me jump in on here. It wasn't mm -hmm. like two weeks ago we didn't have a white militia going to different government buildings because they wanted their haircuts. Yeah. Right. And, and now we get a different response from Trump talking about if they loot and they shoot. And you didn't have that same energy when they wanted their government open back up because at they came the end of the day, they wanted money. They came with full guns, like full assault rifles, full guns, and a forty-five and a Glock in the pocket. In face. I was like, right. bro, they had so much guns on them, a magnet would pull them to the side. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> 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 these guys are showing up with a with a with a cheap ass bandana as a mask because they don't want to catch corona, <laughs> and they're getting banged to the ground. I'm like, yo, what is going on? Like, uh, yeah, that's what scares me about this protest. Like, I see all these people huddled up together, yeah. and I'm like, all it takes is one sneeze. <laughs> One I mean, it's, it's thousands of people in One the streets, cough. thousands of people in the streets, no mask. And it's like, it's funny because like you said, like, even when we talk about that rhetoric of Trump, right? This is a, the, you know, if you, if you loot, then we'll shoot. Like, that's literally a statement that he's regurgitated from um, a segregationist. Um, and that statement was origi originated during segregation, during the time of a protest. And so, again, it's an extension of the connotation of make America great again, which is, you know, rooted in white supremacist ideologies. Mm -hmm. And so, like, both of you are saying, it's like, even when people who are upset about, well, it's, don't, they shouldn't be destroying the target. And I'm like, if you're more concerned about target, who's, you know, multi-million the, the, multi the buildings insured you can't bring back a life hey, right right mm -hmm. i'm like if you're more concerned about target or the businesses if we're going to say targets like 
of America. If you're more concerned about those targets than the targets that are put on our black backs as black people in America, then you're a part of the problem. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like um, the the movie The Hangover, where they've had the scene where they've all had this shitty day or whatever, and like after they get to a table and they're talking about how shitty their day has been, and they're like, "But did you die?" <laughs> He's like, nice. "I got shot." He's like, "But did you die?" And so like that's how I look at it with people who are attempting to infuse uh, respectability politics and dictate how black people should react or express or even like being gracious in the midst of suffering like but did you die did but your we brother or sister die too. we got to think about this what has target said or done during any of these times that things have happened right what else, and what else have what <laughs> like people have done a respectable thing this whole for decades and decades and it gets on no peaceful protest and just leads again your ass beat so it's like, it yo, really how are we going to get your attention? What got you? What did you guys do to, to, to the pyramids, to all these great African countries? You shot fucking the looted it. Yeah, you looted, looted it. it. You so y'all see it. The only, <laughs> only thing they're, <laughs> the only thing they're seeing is money getting gone. So they're looting it. They're, they're, now they got their attention. It's unfortunate. And That's... I don't want to see that be happening to homegrown buildings and homegrown businesses. But like, mm -hmm. it's an unfortunate, necessary thing, man. Like, if you want to get people money who um, attention, who only cares about money, that's that it got their attention now. Look at them. They got the army out. Rather than them say, "Let we're gonna get the we're gonna get these police arrested, the, all four of them, and bring them to justice. Let's make this right." They're putting more money behind paying army people, soldiers who are in a mixed position, and getting more cops who are in a mixed position with this who all don't agree with this situation. They're caught up in it because they're like, oh, bleed blue and all this type of shit. And they have them on in, in the front lines. And they're like, shit, man, I don't agree with this. You know what I mean? Like, right. some of them are gone, brainwashed. But some of them are like, this ain't right, man. Like, I at, at this least we're cracking the ceiling with a lot of these people's mind frame. Because what we need is not only all the, all the cultures to speak up also. Because you're next. If this happened to us, you're next. We need nice. businesses to speak up. We need the targets. We need the WalMarts that are taking 100% of our money to put in at least five to 10% of, of what's going on with right now. We need, we need these other cultures to do the same. And we need the police, most importantly, the ones that are saying they're good or that they don't mean harm. Speak up and speak let's up do some reform. And turn around at that line, turn Man. around and be like, yeah, I'm with them. This is bullshit. We need they lose to look their at job the system. when they do that, which is the messed up thing. That's that's so that fine. tells you that it's rooted in the toxic white supremacy culture. That's fine. They can make a vlog or a YouTube video. I'll watch their YouTube. I'll give them a, <laughs> let they them make money somewhere else. That's honest. And, you know what I mean? That that they know is honest. So yeah. And go ahead. That that's no. That's that's real. Because like like you and Akil were just saying, like when we talk about someone like a George Floyd, where okay, you have five, you have four officers present. Right. So um, you have four officers present, three that are on this this black man who's unarmed and handcuffed, you know, so he's not he's clearly not a threat. And then you have the one the, the one officer who's not on him is preventing civ civilians from intervening. Mm -hmm. He's got one care. hand, you know what I'm saying? And, and he's he's a person of color. And this is why sometimes it's important to make those distinctions between black and people of color. And as Casey I, was saying, I like, honestly don't like the term people of color because it excludes black people. And whenever it's, it's an issue, it's that's, yeah, whenever there's an issue that's specific to black people, they'll use the word people of color so they could group everybody in and and avoid using the phrase black. Right, and that's so you like exactly because like if we're talking specifically like in this context about black people being killed especially unarmed black people being killed by law enforcement no we're not going to say people of color because as you said you when people do that it minimizes something that specifically impacts black people like 2015 you had black people who were five times more likely to be killed than white people black unarmed people right so that's not a personal color issue that is a specific targeting of black people. 104 black people 
unarmed black people were killed by police in 2015. So considering there's 52 weeks in a year, that's essentially at least two people per week, which is what happened this past week, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, did we not just talk about uh, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and as soon as we're trying to hashtag one, oh, I got an alert. There's another, another one. one. I see another video <laughs> on Instagram. And imagine what was happening before we had the smartphones and the information that we have now. Yeah. Right. It's being videotaped right. now. That's it. Yeah. These are the it numbers that we. These are the numbers that we know. These are the bodies. These are the people that we can account for. Like yeah. in 2015, black people represented 13% of the U.S. population, but they represented 36% of victims being killed. And all of them were unarmed. And out of those 104 cases that are documented, only 13 officers were charged. Only four of them served time. And of the four who served time, none of them did over four years. The other five uh, were acquitted and the other four uh, resulted in a mistrial. So. You know, it's like that, like Akil said, it's important that we get the language right and not say people of color when we're talking specifically about these type of issues, especially yeah. when there are people um, of color who are not um, displaying any type of uh, allyship or being accomplices to dismantle systems that specifically target black people. Yeah. And the yeah. flip side to that, you have somebody like Dylan Ruth goes into a church service, sits through the entire service, murders everybody, and then the cops take them out to Burger King before they take them to jail. And they apprehend them alive. I'm not surprised why? by any of that. It's gang shit, it. that's why. It it's is, like it's a- Like, like everybody acts surprised by this stuff. I, I'm not surprised, it's gang shit. This is OG gang shit. That's the origins of the police department, department, if you go back to like the slave catcher badge that they have with yeah. that star. Overseer, the, overseer. That, yeah, the overseer, that's the same thing as the police badge that we see today. Yep. So that's the root. It's rooted in racism. Now, what we what should have happened and what we should do, and in my opinion, I could be wrong. I'm not a genius with all this stuff, but we need to restructure and reformat the way that this police uh, stuff is happening right now. Like, if a police officer kills somebody on duty, there should be harsher repercussions for doing that. They, we need to re reestablish the way this whole thing is being done. We need to hit a update button on on the first amendment that you guys have for that gun shit, all that stuff needs to be restructured and updated to where it is fair to all cultures in the country. That's Honestly, something. the police department needs to turn into like that show, The Watchmen, where they got to call the police. Not a new thing. Like they got to call the chief and get a uh, It's like a hundred years old. Where they mm -hmm. can release and use their gun because I feel like they just use their guns gun ho, but when it's right. a white victim- They ain't even know all about the guns too. It is about the guns because they're quick. It's to about shoot that. Us. I'm just saying. No, I know, but like here, like a girl got thrown off the building. <laughs> she got the dashed hell? right off the building. So it's like people used to be like before when cell phones first popped off. When people first started having cell phones, I remember seeing a video where somebody was at the side of their balcony and they were taping, and cops were just beating the shit out of this black kid on, on the balcony. Like they rushed in his house and they're just beating beating him up. They could have done picked him up and took him in the car, but they were they thought they were just in a pocketed area on a building and they were just beating them and that that was like a, that became something that's, that's my problem you know what I, mean? I feel it's like they don't assess someone took situations their phone and just put it like that you properly. know what i mean they started taping the other because they could hear the commotion from the other room and they're like what the hell's going on in the other apartment so they went and looked and like holy fuck and they ta started taping three police just beating the shit out of this one kid let me let me jump in here right mm -hmm. quick i think that they need better training because there's many situations where they're dealing with somebody who's mentally challenged or deaf. They don't know mm -hmm. how to apprehend those individuals, and that usually ends in somebody getting beat or murdered. Uh, they need better training oh. with dealing with different races, religions, backgrounds. I think they need psyche vows every six months because I feel like there's a lot of sociopaths on the police force right now. Because if you see like the stuff that they deal with on the on the daily basis, that's gonna numb you after a while. And I think that their yeah. psyche needs to be checked at least every six months. They need to humbly see be that, like, that they're fit for duty. Yeah, like they need to be humble about this job and say, I can't handle this. They should go through rigorous therapy and different psychiatric sessions before they get the job or before they're okay to have a gun. I agree with what both of you are saying in terms of 
reform, right? Because we are the there's the mental aspect where okay, you're constantly exposed to intense situations. There's the cultural aspect where it's like okay, when people put on a badge, they don't change their personality. The badge changes your uniform. The badge changes your clothing. But in terms of if if I have a racist disposition, now I am someone in a position of authority with a racist disposition. I am not I am not some good moral higher ground just because I have a badge and been sworn in. Um, especially when I've been sworn into a system that has systemically oppressed people who don't look like me. So like exactly. I think another piece of that reform is punitive measures because as both of you have been talking about, like, okay, this has been a reoccurring issue. Um, and every year there's there's something going on there's, and there are people that have uprisings and, and revolts. But just like we just talked about earlier, people aren't being charged, people aren't going to jail. And then and when people do lose their jobs or when they are removed, they're oftentimes rewarded. They're, they're getting paid administrative leave, yeah. which is essentially PTO after you've killed someone. So, vacation. Yeah, it's a, it's it's essentially vacation. Like when so to Casey's point, right? Let's look at um, Officer Brian Anchino in Texas, who was at a pool party in a black community and brutalized um, a seventeen-year-old girl who's having a pool party with her her friends. Like he does this Power Rangers tuck and roll and puts her in a headlock and all that. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that, right? Mm-hmm. Bunch of so, bullshit. Right. So what happens with him? He gets paid administrative leave for 45 days, which is like a kill set, essentially a vacation. And he doesn't do any time for that. So what would happen if every time there had to be a settlement or a payout or there had to be a suit, it came from their pensions? It came from their salaries? Because then you got to make a decision. Do you really hate black people that much to where you do like and so so (laughs) so okay so so let's go with that so the people who do hate black people that much will lose their pension will lose their salary and their ability to feed their kids and their family all because they're racist we're seeing that right now on facebook you have people who have their job titles and everything on their Facebook. Mm-hmm. And they're going on the <laughs> Fox 8 website and putting you damn monkeys, you damn Negroes. And then you have the social media investigators who pull up all their job information, screen capture that. And got signed today. And got them fired. And then they're just like, <laughs> like wh- what, what hatred in your heart just makes you be like, you know what, I'm about to risk it all. I'm about to type this N-word right now. Mm-hmm. It's That's deep-rooted <laughs> racism. Yeah, this go, whole go thing ahead, is Casey. revealing a lot. This this is revealing a lot, and it's creating questions and conversations that we should have been having for a long time. Now, the charges, the third degree murder. Who Trash. is the person who put that in into the whole thing? You get what I mean? Like, why wasn't it first degree murder? Who was the person who decided that? That's what we need to be looking at, because that was a bullshit call, in my opinion. I, and I think it highlights like balancing what charges you believe will stick in a trial versus mm-hmm. what what charges also reflect the context of the situation because like okay am i going to because it, it is it is a shitty situation either way where you're like okay we've seen where i'll take someone like george zimmerman right yeah uh george zimmerman gets charged and it's like okay damn can you prove this charge in court, if you're charging George with first degree murder um, versus, you know, involuntary manslaughter, mm-hmm. then you're looking at, you know, what's going to stick. With third degree murder in Minneapolis law, you're looking at the semantics of, oh, this person was accosted, they were arrested, but there wasn't necessarily a premeditation of killing this person. Now, I believe per the Minnesota law, they could have done was at least was second degree, second degree murder. Yeah. Because the premeditation um, and still pursuit of or contributing to the murder comes into play where you have the three officers and you also it also comes into play where you have 
nine minutes, right? So this isn't something that transpires in the moment where um, it's a, a, it's a 30 second or five second reaction where you're like, oh, I, he attacked me. I feared for my life, reached my gun and I shot him. No, this is a nine minute yeah. uh, ordeal. Yeah. So we're not talking about something that was spurred a moment. This is something that was orchestrated. This is something that was strategic. This is something that was drawn out. And for that, for that reason, second degree uh, would Good be question, just, Alonzo. just um, liable. What what I read that he had twelve disciplinary um, actions against yes. him. Now would that yes. come into play in court? Well, it's it's so much about what court is like what you can prove, right? It's it's not even so much about what we know. So yeah, we know he's had dozens of um, you know issues and instances that are specifically linked towards uh, b- black people, right? So we know that, but can we prove that based on that track record, it it's linked to what happened that day? Like he said, you know what, I'm gonna go and kill a nigga today. We can't necessarily prove that, even though clearly the record indicates this is a pervasive issue, this is a pattern, it's not an isolated incident. Um, so I think that's again, like what both of you were talking about with the justice system, so much of it, in, in terms of what Casey was talking about is revisiting mm. policies, yeah. um, revisiting what's in play. Cause I mean, you have policies that are still in the books from Jim Crow. Oh yeah, cause um, we were three fifths of human being back then. They, those rules yeah. weren't made for us. The constitution wasn't made for us. The right to bear arms wasn't made for us. So everything needs to be revised. Exactly. Um, I, I want to switch gears real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we, we spoke briefly about Sean King. He he seems to be at the forefront of activism, a- activism with yeah, uh, Black activism. Lives Matter. Yeah. And um, I wanted to know your uh, your uh, thoughts on uh, Mr. King. Mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good, man. Because because I I got some people uh, in my groups of of uh, conversations online that I posted the stuff about what you said. The the mm-hmm. I reposted that in a couple of groups, and people were like, "What do you do?" What is he doing? I'm like, no, he's, you know, so good. Explain, explain. For the people who, yeah. you know, they'll be watching this. <laughs> so, so Sean King, a.k.a. Talcum X, a.k.a. Martin Luther Cream, a.k.a. Yeah. Broderick Douglas, a.k.a. So Where's the Truth? I could go on, um, Meg or Nevers. Um, I could go on, but like, essentially with Sean King, he came to prominence um, because of social justice issues. Uh, mm-hmm. For example, when Trayvon Martin was killed by George Zimmerman and Black Lives Matter was born out of a tweet back in fall 2012, Sean King latched himself onto that um, Black Lives Matter movement because it, it started from there. Yeah. So Sean King has habitually since then been talking about on, on, you know, on his Twitter, he talks about raising money, raising funds through GoFundMe and other crowdfunding campaigns, um, aligning himself or positioning himself as if he's doing it in correlation or conjunction with the movement. What has come to the surface with it, like almost like an annual review, mm-hmm. is that Sean King, despite being able to have a platform and a, to raise money, uh, nobody's questioning his ability to raise money. He does that very well. Uh, but the question is, where's the money going? Right. Yeah. So yeah. this week, actually yesterday, like he was called out by people who have boots on the grounds, you know, the Minneapolis fund and like people with a black voices fund because Sean King was, you know, doing what Sean King does. He had tweeted that he was raising money in conjunction with the Black Voices Fund. And they're like, they retweeted and were like, do not donate money to this link. We have not talked to Sean. We have not talked with him. We don't know where that money is going to go. Mm-hmm. If you want to donate, we accept funds and here are the proper links to, to donate. Yeah. So Sean King again is... Sounds like Don King to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, this is some King, Don King. (laughs) Don't don't fall fall far from the tree, right? Sounds like Don King. I'm like, 
Maybe that's his lost daddy that he never met. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and I, I like, I posted about it on Facebook because I was like, this is just a weekly reminder because yeah. I don't want to assume, just like yeah. we're having this conversation today, I don't want to assume that everyone knows um, what I found out about him because even when he did a North Star, he was supposed to be doing a North Star project, which is, you know, in honor of Frederick Douglass, who had a North Star newspaper with abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison. Yeah. And this is where he really started getting exposed because he took on all this money for the project and it's supposed to be newspapers and podcasts and all this different media platforms. Mm -hmm. Well, the person who was over the North Star project said, well, Sean is a fraud. Sean has used our name to raise money and funds. He has not contacted us. Um, so he's using our name in order to build his own platform. He hasn't created anything substantial. And like, even as early as this morning, one of my classmates, he had talked about, um, I hate to see black people like do a smear campaign on somebody trying to do well, cause they had yeah. donated, they had donated to John King and yeah. he compared what I was doing was like a smear campaign on Sean no. King no. to Marcus Garvey. And I was like, first off, Marcus Garvey actually had tangible newspapers. He actually had tangible things that you could point to and say, oh, this is what people can read, or this is us actually starship line that people can write. Like, so yeah. while there were different people who infiltrated and like did end up doing Garvey's name, some, some doing his name dirty with the UNIA, he actually had tangible contributions. But Sean King is farce as Garvey because everything he's done has been just that, a farce. Mm. You know, like, he has nothing tangible for all the money that he's raised, which he probably brings in 125K per year yeah. um, with these causes. He has nothing tangible that we can point to and say, oh, this is where that money went for the Black Democrats. This is where that money went for Black Lives Matter. This is where that money went for the Minneapolis Fund. This is where that money went for Black Voices. Yeah. And he just got called to the conference. He bought some Yeezys with it, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, my, my, thing, my thing with him is like, he gives, he at least gives a good message and he's fighting, he seems like he's fighting for the causes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But it's mm -hmm. just when it comes to the finance, be careful when you're giving money to him. And no, what you were doing was raising awareness to where, if you want to donate, where the actual donate spot is. Because he's keeping his right. mouth quiet. Like, Hey man, if you're giving me money, I'm taking it. It's but he's like saying, that. don't give it to me, exactly. give it to them. And that, that, that's the, what, what I saw you were doing. Because I, I see he does, he does things that I could say is like, that's information and it's good, in my opinion, where he would say, this is exactly what you got to say to call for the gentleman that was jogging. Mm -hmm. Call and say this exact sentence and to get this thing pushed forward. That was a great thing he did. You know what I mean? But when it comes to them finances... That's where you gotta be careful. He's like, you know, you, you have a cousin that you love, but you don't leave stuff around him because he steals shit. That's, you know, you gotta treat Sean. Sean. What are you talking about? <laughs> Talk with your chest, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> name like, the name. Yeah, yeah, leave shit around. Hey, he, he <laughs> shit. It sounds um, familiar. I've heard that in a song somewhere. Kanye, go get that laptop back. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get final thoughts. Let's get everything. Oh, hold on. Before right final now. thoughts. Yeah. We ain't laughing, we crying, man. So what? what are some things that you guys saw that that made you kind of laugh. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say my two while y'all think. <laughs> All right. The small ass, the small ass shield. The guy in Atlanta who had the small little <laughs> circular shield. And the guy that like, got that bum ass shield, boy. Got that small ass shield. And the guy just had to laugh. He's like, yeah, they just gave me this, boy. And then the, the skateboard white boy at a, in Atlanta that was bashing the glass. Remember, do you guys remember him? And he had yep. the lasers. He's like, "Fucking do it, bro!" Do it. <laughs> and then he cut his hand. He's like, "Oh shit, man." Yo, give me a rag. <laughs> when he, when he, I'm sorry, but when he cut his hand, <laughs> I had to laugh. I had to laugh. I was like, this idiot, what are you even doing? <laughs> what is he doing? My highlights this week were, movie. they were uh, Wheelchair Karen. <laughs> oh, Lord. And yeah, then the, the other one I saw, somebody, they, there were some Amish people. They were protesting with Black Lives Matter. And okay. somebody put... Who the fuck told them they don't have TV? How'd they find out? <laughs> so that, that shit made my day. I was like, yo, when the that's Amish people fact. jump in, that's when you know shit is real. So they long as the, <laughs> They the felt Amish... a rumbling on the dirt, man. They felt a <laughs> weird rumbling. They're like, <laughs> the Negroes <laughs> are getting anxious. Let's, they, let's wrong join them. <laughs> they, they heard the rumblings on the cobblestone. Yeah. Let me tell you, 
as someone who's who's met Amish and Mennonite people somewhere in Kenyan, New York, uh-huh. they they stay informed somehow. Like, I mean, they get their buggies. Carrier stuff, pigeons. They, <laughs> they got their buggies and they stay informed. So I agree Lonzo, with you're two less quick. When you get the I, I I agree with a kill. Wheelchair Karen, wheelchair Wendy, whatever you want to call her. When her name I was Jennifer. like, I was like, yeah, Jennifer. I was like, you gotta pick a struggle. You can't roll up, literally, roll <laughs> up with a knife trying to shank people on some on some prison ish. Yeah, Which then you sit, we ain't no get time. get get maced and get smoked. She that's that's mine. That's mine because she. <laughs> She she got all the smoke that she wanted and then some, so while we'll claiming talk. while claiming to be nonviolent. So that's yeah, my what final thoughts. You guys got <laughs> that's it for me. Um, let me wrap this up. Yeah. It was a pleasure having everybody here. Thank you, Casey, giving us your Toronto perspective. That's Alonzo, where are you at? Still in cues, you know, being young, gifted, and black, and like you said, Absolutely. final thoughts, man. Y'all just be be courageous, be aware and be vigilant you know final That's thoughts it. white people keep speaking up man i saw tyler i saw uh, what's her name taylor swift was speaking mm-hmm. up i was like yeah. shit the swifties <laughs> are gonna jump on uh anti-racism now <laughs> mayo madness the mayo <laughs> madness <laughs> yeah, so man. i'm all for it i love seeing all these white people speak out on uh these issues it, yeah, it, we need some white allies so i, I greatly appreciate it uh, this is the Back and Now podcast. Make sure that you reach us on the underscore Back and Now. That's B A C C H A N A L podcast. Peace. Peace, everybody.